Yeah. <clears throat> I want you to turn with me into the book of St. Matthew, uh, the fifth chapter. And uh, I want to read, begin to read at verse 13. Matthew 5, 13. Notice what the Bible says. Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing. If salt lost its savor, uh, wherewith shall it be salt? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trotted under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that is that are in the house. And verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And the reason for that is that, and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Bow your heads one more time, Father of heaven. We thank you for the reading of your word, and we're, we're thankful for all these precious people that's come here this morning to your house. And we pray blessings on their lives, upon their families, upon their hearts. Lord, we pray that you would bless your word, let your word speak to us, and Lord, let us respond to that. We honor you and we thank you in Jesus' name. We ask for your anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, here the Bible speaks, Jesus is talking, and he said, you are the salt of the earth. You're the salt of the earth. Salt is what purifies. Salt is what preserves. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trotted under the feet of men. Then he talked about, you're the light of the world. I want to talk, speak this morning uh, that you're salt and light. You're salt and light. Uh, that's what we are. And that's what we're supposed to be. We're, uh, we're here in this earth in this world to be a difference maker. We're here, uh, as I've heard folks say, we're not, we're not here just to suck up air, but we're here to make a difference to this world, to make a difference to your family and neighbors and friends. Uh, the church, the true church, is the answer to all the problems in America. And there's, there's a lot of problems in America, and there's a lot of problems in the world. But the true church of God uh, is the answer. The world ought to be thankful that we're here. If we wasn't here uh, you talk about chaos. Uh, you and I, we're here to make a difference. Uh, the church exists. The existence of the church is for the sake 
of the world. Jesus Christ, he said, I've not come to destroy lives, but I've come to save lives. I've come to give people abundance of life, that they could have life more abundantly. So we are the salt of the earth. The, we are a preservative influence. People are needing what we have. <laughs> oh, my, my. I was telling Sherry yesterday, we were, we were talking about old-time things. And I was telling Sherry that uh, when I grew up, Dad had a smokehouse. Uh, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, uh, see if you know what a sm don't know what a smokehouse is. Most of you don't. But Dad had a smokehouse, and when uh, he would butcher hogs, he, would, uh, he had a table out there. And he'd take salt and he'd just sprinkle it on those big hams and uh, slices of bacon and big slabs of bacon and uh, just uh, let that salt soak in. And then he, could, uh, he would hang it up and it didn't matter if he didn't go back out there for months. It wouldn't rot. It wouldn't spoil because of that salt that, <laughs> that was put in. Let me tell you, that's the reason Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. Oh, my, 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 my. We have a purpose in this world. You have a reason for being here. And that is not only to live pure, but also that you can purify other people that's being spoiled by the things of this world and being spoiled by sin. Hallelujah. Just sprinkle some salt on your loved ones. And oh my... Just go over to them and just, and they might say, what are you doing? I'm just, I'm just covering you with salt. Hallelujah. I want you to know there's something about the word of God and living for God that preserves people. Salt and light. <laughs> Ye are the salt of the earth. We're put here to help this uh, society. We're put here to help our neighbors and help our people and help this world. We are supposed to be an influence in this world. We're supposed to be able to uh, help people. Salt will make you thirsty. Oh, glory. Let me tell you, are you making people thirsty? You are an influence, and we're living in a bad world. We're living in a terrible world. But thank God that we're here. Thank God that the church is here, that we can make a difference, and we can change, we can change things. I believe that we're here for a special work. Oh, my. If God wanted to take you to heaven, if that was the only thing that he wanted to do to take you to heaven when you got saved, he would just stop your heart <laughs> and took you on. But every one of us here there's a reason for you being here. And if you don't know that reason, you need to find it out. There's a purpose for you being here. So he said, you're the salt of the earth. Um, but if the salt has lost its savior, 
uh, its effectiveness. It's not good for anything. There's, there's people that has lost the savor, the effectiveness of, as we were singing that song about a testimony. There's people that's lost, lost their influence because they have uh, out there in the world, they don't live like a Christian. You know, I mean, let me tell you, from the time I got saved, I worked around people that, uh, that uh, went to church every Sunday. And at work, they would curse and go on and tell dirty jokes and things like that. And that just, that just to me, it lost that effectiveness, that influence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me tell you, I believe that we can be salt and light even in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. We can be what we're supposed to be. I remember, I remember uh, uh, when I was working in, in Millersboro, uh, they put me with this guy in a little room, and we was working, and he was just uh, carrying on all kinds of junk and uh, he would come up and he would ask me something vulgar you know and I would just look at him and and I, I just tell him I'm not talking that way and here's what he said he said I knew you was a Christian I was just going to see what you will do I'm glad that I was salt. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I worked four years there, and at the end of the four years, let me tell you, uh, they got together and bought me a big Bible. <laughs> Glory to God, and presented it to me from the co workers. I want to tell you, you can be a difference maker in this life. You can be a change maker in this life. So if the salt has lost its savor, Wherewith shall it be seasoned? Uh, so we are here as salt. The true church of Jesus Christ is so powerful. Now I know there's there's a lot of churches that's already lost their savor. I mean because they allow anything, everything, and uh, everything they've lost their savor last week I mentioned about the Antichrist I want to talk just a little bit more about that and uh, uh, what it means to be a Christian and in 2 Thessalonians 2 2 chapter 1 through 10 uh the, the church's presence is here to hinder evil. We are here to hinder evil. So let me read this. Paul here talked about the rapture and talked about the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is two different things. He was talking about the rapture and he was talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, you don't have to be worried about the rapture if you're saved. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're a Christian, don't even worry about the rapture because, man, that's what we're looking forward to. How many is looking forward to getting in out of here? That's all the rapture is. Just getting out of this place. Uh, it's a catching away of the saints and to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, 
in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So Paul here, when he was writing to the people of Thessalonian uh, people, uh, he wanted to set some straight, some things straight because uh, they had a wrong idea about the, the rapture of the church. Listen to what he said in verse 1, chapter 2. Paul says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, talking about the rapture and the second coming of Jesus Christ. He said, I don't want you to be soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. What Paul was talking about, uh, there was false teachers and false doctrines uh, that was uh, teaching that he's coming tomorrow. He's coming real quick. So Paul wanted to let them know uh, they don't have to be worried about that. And also, there was, there was folks that was uh, given prophecy uh, uh, and uh, tongues and prophecy. The Lord's coming real quick, real soon, real quick. And it made people worried and afraid. And then also, uh, there was some that had a word, supposedly a word. Have you ever heard folks say, I've got a word for you? Some people has a real word and some people don't have a real word. You have to rightly divide things. Be careful. So some, some people had a word and they were saying the same thing. And then even some people had wrote letters and signed Paul's name to it. Concerning Paul said this. This is what Paul said. He signed it that Jesus Christ is coming real soon. Listen to what verse 3 says. Paul said, let no man deceive you by any means. For the day, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. That word falling away, uh, old time preachers talked about the church uh, Falling, falling behind and falling down. And, but that's not what that's talking about. It's talking about uh, uh, departure first. That day of the second coming of Jesus Christ is not going to happen until the rapture takes place. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, glory to God. The next great event on planet Earth is the rapture of the church. Jesus Christ will appear in the clouds of heaven. Oh, glory to God. And the Bible says that uh, all the saints in God will rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up uh, together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord and he said wherefore comfort one another with these words so what I'm doing right now at this particular time I'm comforting you because one of these days the trump of God's going to sound and if you're saved it's a happy happy uh, journey it's a happy uh, exit out of this world as I said like week we'll say bye to sin we'll say bye to the devil we'll say bye to sickness and disease we'll say bye to sorrows we'll say bye to disappointment oh my 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 let me tell you the rapture of the church is something that's genuine and real and we're going to be happy yeah. oh, glory to God ain't you going to be happy Oh, my glory to God. We're going to be happy. 
I mean, I'm going to forget about my dentures or uh, partials and crow's feet and bones cracking and popping. I'll have a brand new body that's fashioned like to his own glorious body. How many is going to be happy about that? Boy, y'all must feeling bad. <laughs> Oh my, I'm so thankful that one of these days it's going to all be over and we'll have a brand new body. So the rapture of the church is, is a glorious thing for Christians. Don't have to worry. But if your heart's not right, if you've not fixed things with God, if you've not asked him to forgive you, you should be worried. Listen to what it says. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, talking about the rapture. After the rapture, now folks has to be worried. If you're not taken out of here, if you're not saved. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, that... Uh, happens before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Not the rapture, but the second coming. This world is going to be in a, in a terrible shape after we're out of here. We're salt and we're light. Hallelujah. And verse 4 says, talking about the Antichrist, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship. He exalts himself. He puts down the Antichrist, will put down all, every kind of religion, and he will take up on himself a deity. I'm the man. I'm the one that's going to solve the world's problem and I ain't worried about that part because I'm going to be out of here and you too. Uh, so that he as God, he will, the Antichrist be as God, sits in the temple of God. And that is the Jewish temple that is to be built. This Antichrist will dismiss any kind of Jewish religions and sit in that temple and make that his sanctuary and his headquarters. Hallelujah. And Paul said in verse 6, Now you know what withholds the church, the salt, and the light that he might be revealed in his time. The reason he's not revealed right now is because you're salt and you're light. You're preserving it. You're, you're preserving uh, the way of worship. <laughs> After we're out of here, there's not going to be any anointed singing like what we experienced here this morning unless it's just... Uh, uh, unless it's someone that's uh, in uh, hidden churches uh, for uh, hiding for their lives. But now you know what withholds the church, that he might be revealed in his time. The, the church is holding that back. Oh, my. Every politician... They ought, to be, they ought to be declaring the church of Jesus Christ as the greatest thing that ever happened to this world. But I want to tell you something. <laughs> Not every politician has that mindset. Many of them are controlled by demon spirits and things like that. That's the reason there's a mess in this world today. But one of these days, it's going to all be over. And let me tell you, be thankful for the word of God that is being preached in our, worship, in our world today and in our churches today. Now you know what withholds 
the church, in other words, the church, that he might be revealed in his time, the Antichrist. Uh, and he's going to be revealed after the rapture of the church. The Bible says, for the mystery of iniquity to already work. It was already taking place back then. False teaching and false teachers. Only he, the church, who will now let who now hinders, listen to what it says, who now hinders evil, will let or will continue to hinder. I'm so glad we're hindering evil. I'm so glad we're hindering it. You might say, well, boy, there's a lot of it out there. Let me tell you, there would be a lot, 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 lot more if we wasn't here. And we're hindering it. But let me tell you, listen to what it says. Uh, who will hinder it until he be taken out of the way? So we're going to still be sought until we're taken out of the way. And when we're taken out of the way, there's no salt that's going to help things. Oh, listen to what verse uh, 8 says. And then, talking about the rapture of the church, shall that wicked one, the Antichrist, be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with, uh, with his spirit of his mouth and will destroy him with the brightness of his coming. Let me tell you, when Jesus Christ comes back, this, on the second coming, not the rapture, we are done there with him. When he comes back the second time, he's coming with an army. We're going to be riding horses. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. He comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all. I want you to know we're going to be in that. Get ready. Well, Brother David, I don't know if I want to fight with the Antichrist. Let me tell you, you'll not die. <laughs> you'll not die. Because the Lord is going to slay him with his spirit and with the brightness of his coming. Oh, my, my, my. Hallelujah. Verse 9 says, Even him, the Antichrist, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and light and wonders. Oh, there he is in the temple. There he is. Saying, I'm, I'm God. But let me tell you, when he comes back, Jesus with us, the Bible says he comes, behold, he comes with 10,000s of his saints to execute judgment. <laughs> and the Antichrist and all, all his forces Oh, my. Going to be slain. Hallelujah. Let me hurry up. But if salt has lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Then verse 14 says, You're the light of the world, a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all who are in the house. This light that we have, every one of you that has gotten saved, you have a light in you. Light will dispel darkness. Oh, my. Light pushes back 
darkness. <laughs> Glory to God. What did he say? You're the light of the world. Your city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. It is not to be obscured. It is not to be hidden. This dark world needs to see. And you have that light in you. That light is not a light that you have personally. But you and I, we're just a reflection of the true light. The Bible says God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So we, we are uh, light in this world. We're, we have light because the light of life is in us. Jesus Christ, oh my I want to tell you, it shines out sometimes. <laughs> it should shine out all the time. But it can get right in you that it'll show up on you. It'll show up on your flesh. I see it on people sometimes. I see that glow on people's countenance sometimes. <laughs> Moses got so close to that light. <laughs> that when he came off the mountain, the Bible says that the skin of his face shined because of the glory of God shining through him. And that's what I see sometimes on people. I see that, that shine that light and Moses when he came off the mountain there was beams of light <laughs> you talk about scary for all those out there committing fortification and uh, worshiping an idol calf and uh, doing everything drinking and uh, uh, everything that you can think of Moses walks off the mountain and there's beams of light <laughs> just shooting out of his head. Hallelujah. Everybody got so scared they had to, uh, Moses had to put a veil over his face to keep people from seeing that because that that uh, that light, that veil or that uh, uh, beams of light was shining out. And when he would talk to the people, He put a veil on his face because they couldn't stand it. But when he went into the presence of God, he took it off. I want you to know light and salt, your light and your salt. <laughs> light pushes back darkness. Light shines the path for freedom. That's the reason every one of us ought to be a bright and shining light. Oh, my. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. That ought to be our motto. <laughs> Woo! Now, some of this stuff, it just hits me, and I do it. I don't know if I can do it or not, but I try. <clears throat> so this light that's in us, there's people in darkness out there. They, don't, they can't even see where they're going, but the light shines a path to freedom. And the light reveals danger. Danger. We're here today as light and salt. And this world is so blessed because we are here. 